record. All right. Well, I want to welcome all of you to today's Zoom, and we're going to be talking about the Six Figure Productivity Coach. And my name is Mark Simpson, and I am. Uh, I wear two hats. Um, I am the director of productivity for Keller Williams Emerald Coast on the white sandy beaches of Destin, Florida. And uh, I am also the VP of training and education for the locker room. And I had the good fortune of meeting Jake Dixon while I was the general manager of uh, multiple market centers and uh, connected with Jake, began to work with he in the locker room and um, when I implemented the, the productivity coaching program last year here on the Emerald Coast, um, we, we, work, we, we continue to work together within that. But um, here's what I do know is uh, there is a path to six figures in productivity coaching. And I am uh, living proof of that. Had a great, uh, you know, the growth and the implementation and following these plans will make a big difference. And um, uh, at the end of the day, our hope and our goal is that we impart to you, we share with you some best practices and things that can help you become more successful. And uh, we are very fortunate to have my coach, my friend, uh, my, 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 my good, my, wait, what can I say? Uh, I am just blessed to have Jake Dixon, the founder of The Locker Room, here with us guiding this conversation. And from time to time, I'll weigh in. But Jake, um, thank you for being here to talk to uh, of, the of course, of course. Thank you all for uh, allowing me to be here. And, and I know we've got several people uh, who are likely watching the replay of this. So I want to tip my cap to you and, and thank you for making it a priority as well. I know schedules are crazy. There's leadership calls all over the place. So appreciate you. Those of you that are here live, hey, hey. And uh, those of you watching the replay, much appreciated as well. So guys, uh, I'll be short, okay? But I, I want to first say, hey, I'm not here, neither is Mark, to sell you anything. So you can let your guard down where there's no pitches, there's no closes of any kind. I love this role, otherwise known as a productivity coach. I know Mark is the same way. And so this is us giving back to you all who are on the front lines uh, as PCs, or, or and maybe we've got some TLs and other people on here too, that's okay. But I care so freaking much about this role. I still believe it's the best kept secret and the greatest opportunity in all of Keller Williams. And for that, we just wanna give back to something that's given us so much. So is it okay if we do that? Yes or yes? <laughs> Great. All right, so that being said, yes, my name is Jake, hello, hello. Uh, founder of The Locker Room, all the things, but as it pertains to today, so I was a team leader for three years uh, when I first started out at Keller Williams, and then I transitioned into becoming a productivity coach for another three years after that. And it was during that transition time, I was really doing some benchmarking, researching the PC role. I remember attending a breakout session at Family Reunion, and one by one at the end, when they asked, hey, what's the number one thing a PC should look for? Unanimously on this panel, they said, leadership alignment right? So I hope whatever you gain from today, you're able to take and talk to with your leadership, your TL, your OP, because we one team, one vision, one dream of changing the agents and impacting your lives one conversation at a time. Fair? Now we have partnered with, geez, all, just shy of 200 Keller Williams PC programs. This is like, you dare say, our one thing, okay, to respect Gary Keller and, and, and his book there. Um, this is not our first rodeo. So what Mark and I are gonna to do today is just do a high level overview and we'll deep dive into certain things as well of what we have witnessed that produces a six figure PC. Because guess what guys, ladies, gentlemen, um, every time I talk to a productivity coach and, and therefore have coached other productivity coaches, guess what you guys generally say, just like a brand new agent. <laughs> I wanna earn six figures. It's amazing, right? And so what we're going to do today is, is talk about what we've witnessed, what we've lived ourselves to create a six-figure opportunity for you as a PC, right? Now, before I do that, I want to share one thing to set up the conversation today. And I'm going to do some screen share. So get ready, take notes, do your thing. But let me share, share this with you. Now, last week or, or two weeks ago, perhaps by now, I shared this with team leaders and operating principals. Mark, can you see me, the screen that is? I see it perfectly. You got it. 
So guys, look, there, there's a lot of variables and we, we can certainly break this down. Heck, most of you probably already done this for yourself, but I wanna show you how attainable it is when we break it down to an economic model. So let's just pretend some of you in Brooklyn may have a much, much higher sales price than that, but $200,000, very modest, okay? 2.8% commission, uh, which would mean an average of 1680 towards the company dollar, so on and so forth. You can read this for yourself. But here's the, here's the kicker, right? Let's assume you want to uh, uh, clear $100,000 as a coach. With some other factors at play and using Gary's 50-50, suggestion, 50% of my business coming from listings, same on the buyer side, you sprinkle in a few conversion rates, here's what it spits out. So basically what we need to do for the year is close 200 homes in this example. You think for a minute, you're not a mega mega team, you need to, we need to work on that mindset because you are, this is not a program, this is a team, that's 40 million, 336 of company dollar, right? On the right-hand side is my absolute favorite because when it starts breaking things down to, oh, that's 17 closings a month in this example. And with those conversion rates, you mean to tell me I just need to get 22 listing appointments and 22 buyer appointments for the month. And you divide that out, however many people are in your program. Now, all of a sudden, it takes something that seems so far away and so far out of reach for so many and now it makes it bite size, or as Mark Simpson likes to say, we're slicing it deli style. Um, and, and now it becomes something that you can actually grab and latch hold of. All right. So I just want to show you this from an economic standpoint. That is not what we're going to dive into so much today, but I think it's good to see the belief and see how practical this is. Um, again, different scenarios, different markets. I understand that. Mark, anything to add to that before I share the, uh, the PowerPoint? No, I, I think, you know, when I look at that 17 number, 17 closed units, and uh, right now I'm coaching 70 agents, and um, we, we've surpassed that. We're, we're holding at about 30 pending at all time, and, um, you know, we're $15,000, $16,000 a month of coaching fees, yep. and so um, those, th there's a way, that those numbers work and work beautifully. Absolutely. All right. Well, without further ado, oh, by the way, I should add to this, part of my story is in Fort Mill, where I started my PC journey in, I didn't inherit anything. So I don't know, Stephanie, Michelle, and so many others, if you're where you're at in this journey. But what I do know is in that first year, fast forward a year later, we produced over a million dollars of company dollar fresh. I did not inherit a program. I had to start it from scratch, nothing. Guys, that was $3.6 million of agent earned GCI to do that million dollars of fresh squeaky clean company dollar year one. That was 124 million of sales volume, 623 closings. So I, I don't, I'm not saying that to brag because it sure as heck wasn't me doing it. It was the agents, they were incredible. But maybe just hearing that expands what you think is possible in this role as a PC. My first year, I cleared $350,000. I had never made that much money in my freaking life. So, uh, yep. So I launched with zero agents, <laughs> right? Day 31, I re-recruited our own agents from within. So I had 68 agents on day 31. And then at any given time, I would roll with about 95 to 105 agents mm -hmm. after it was fully established and rolling. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's a really good question just for perspective, very fair. And yet in most offices, when you consider outside of the top 20% and I'm supposed to coach, consult, train everybody else, you, there's still some fishing to do in that back backyard pond of yours, right? So yeah. we're going to talk about that today. It's a really good question. Thank you for asking that. All right. So let me share my uh, fancy schmancy PowerPoint. Not really. I'm not much of a PowerPoint junkie. I do my best. Let's get this up on the screen. Mark, can you see that? I can. All right, let's do it. So guys, let's dive in. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna talk about all this. We're gonna first hit on the core principles. This is the foundation, okay, that I believe and I have witnessed with so many others that is critical for you. And then of course, hit on the various factors to achieving six figures. So don't worry about it right now. I know it's a lot of words on paper, but we will hit each one of those starting now. 
So core principles, number one, I know some of this is maybe redundant, but some of you need to hear this anyway, okay? Show up. I, 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 look, <laughs> by the way, I'm gonna get a little passionate and animated. That's just who I am. I'm sorry in advance. Productivity coaches out there, you gotta show up. Why, why do we even have to say it? Why is this even a bullet point, right? And yet it is for a reason, just like there's reasons that you and your various programs have made statements and standards because so and so along the way, there was enough evidence of that reoccurring violation that you had to make it a thing, right? So I'm making it a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a nerd when it comes to tracking numbers and I am not, I, I don't romanticize numbers. I don't make them up. This is a fact. After four years, this was a year ago with this data, after four years of working with PCs, guess what I found? Mm -hmm. Same is true. The coaches who are with us, okay, or MAPS or whatever, fill in the blank, were 493% more productive when they were engaging. I know, I know. There was people with us who were paying the money and not showing up just like agents do. And I'm telling you, the difference is drastic. I'm sure of it. Whether whoever you're coaching through, with all due respect, the bottom line is when you show up, go figure, numbers and other people begin to show up. Everything rises and falls on you. You got to be resourceful, right? Utilize your proven tools, create your own resources, leverage other people's. I don't care. But as they say, success leaves clues. And guess what? There's a flip side to that. So does failure. So does mistakes and learn from that. But gosh, you got to be resourceful and figure it out because you are a CEO. You are the OP of a market center within a market center. If you have that mindset of a business person, not just, well, I got bored selling homes and so-and-so tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, I think you'd be a great coach. Sure. That's how a lot of this happens. And I'm not being critical. I'm not trying to be. I'm just speaking truth. So show up as a leader, not just a hobbyist. Those agents deserve more. If you're not able to provide it, either figure out a way, go back to bullet point number two, or get out of the way. I love you. Maybe that sounds harsh, but I am obsessively passionate, as is Mark, about serving these agents that we lovingly call the blue ocean. It's the 97% of agents that currently sell 24 or fewer homes per year. 87% who don't renew their license after their first two years in the business. We've got a problem and they need us. We're doing God's work. Mark, go ahead. Yeah. And, and, and look to the, to the next point here is this is a priority. Uh, I am not saying that you can't run real estate on the side. I, this is my one thing. And what I saw in this was an opportunity. It's, it's kind of like the JP Morgan statement of, I would rather have 1% effort of a hundred people than 100% effort of my own. And what I saw was an opportunity to leverage, create, and by focusing, create a mega opportunity. Um, and, and it's not a side hustle. If you treat it like a hot side hustle, it will be a side hustle. The same thing we tell our agents. And this is, there is a path to a millionaire PC model. It's just a model. Gary's laid out the groundwork for us. We just take the MREA and make some adjustments here and there, and there's a path for you too, which also means, because nobody succeeds alone, there's a pathway of opportunity that you're going to blaze for other people, whether you call them launch coaches, assistant coaches, it doesn't matter. There is an organizational chart component to this whole thing as well. Run it like a team. Yep. All right. So number two, and we'll take questions, of course, at the end, be consistent. I can't believe it, but yes, I know this is elementary stuff. Time on task over time. Maybe you need to hear that today. It's having patience with a sense of urgency, right? We got to show up. We got to be leaders and be consistent because if that's what I expect of them, I got to expect the same thing of myself and show up that way. Now you watch the College World Series and all these sports happening right now. Consistency wins championships. I played college and professional baseball and I can tell you that is spot on. It's not always the most talented team who wins. It's the one that comes together as a team and they show up consistently, even in practice, even when the cameras aren't on, they're playing at game speed, man. And you got to be that way every single day and show up and play full on. Okay. So asking yourself that question, well, what is, what do I need to be consistent with? It goes back to organizational charts. It goes back to economic models. What are those leading indicators? Hey, you know what? If you're far away from the sun, getting those 17 consistent closings, like we showed you earlier, 
let's start somewhere. Let's at least nail the appointments, 22 buyer and 22 listing appointments every month. Yeah. Who's going to get, who's going to rise up agents? Who's going to do it? Oh, how many are you? You're good for two. Great. You're good for one. Fine. Oh, you're going on vacation this month. No problem. I'm going to mark you for zero. All we got to do is find the people who are willing to raise their hands and stay accountable to you as well as their own goals. I think it was once uh, Chris Heller used to say, nobody will say no to their own goals. Nobody will say no to their own goals. I'm going to hit on more of that here in a minute, but guys, this is common sense stuff, but let's not take it for granted. Are you playing consistent right now? Are you showing up that way? It's so easy to get caught in the ebb and flow. I know the market is challenging right now. Our agents are the buyer fatigue and all that stuff is very real. Some, some of you may need to transition to being kind of that mindset coach, that life coach for a few of those agents right now and stop drilling them over the head with all the, all the tactics. They just need you to be a friend, not, you know, don't cross that line, but in some capacity, a friend and just listen. And Jake, right? I think, that, you know, what's so important, and I always say this to, to the agents is, if you want to walk, I'll walk. If you want to run, I want to run. If you want to sprint, I dare you to try to outrun me. And some agents, they just need a warm light and, and to incubate in until they hatch. And some just won't hatch. And right. so you've got to control your own emotions. You, you've, but you've got to show up, be consistent and um, run with the runners, walk with the walkers, love on those that just need some heat and, and it takes care of itself and, and put on your band, roll on and don't let them see you sweat. That's it. That's it. Good. All right. Number three, real quick, set clear standards. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I believe in slowing things down on the front end so we can speed it up on the back end. In Fort Mill, when I, and that's my experience. So I'm going to reference Fort Mill, South Carolina. That's where I was a productivity coach. This was my philosophy day one. And thank God it worked. Doesn't have to be your philosophy, but it was bullet point two. I made damn sure that people knew this quote with me. They didn't care how much I knew until they knew how much I cared. So that first month, it was exhausting because why? Well, I had mentioned I, I inherited nothing. And I launched it finally day 31 after re-recruiting our own agents with 68. Well, that first month, while I'm not only holding info sessions and recruiting and making the calls, but all the while, I'm also meeting with every single one of those 68 and actually a few more for one hour. And I honored the integrity of what I told them that hour was going to be about to say, look, I can nickel, I, I can shiny object you all day. I am not here to talk about the coaching. I'm not, I'm here to talk about you. And I wanna to get to know you. And I'm taking notes furiously and I'm listening intently because of that right there. They didn't need to know who this hot dog Jake that guy thinks he is coming in here. I needed to connect with them first. So some of you right now, if you're hearing this, maybe what you need to do, if you're banging your head against the wall, like why aren't my agents engaging? It's all their fault. What's wrong with them? You might have more DNA in this than you care to admit. When's the last time you picked up the phone and just called them just because? Or have you already written that agent off? Our agents spell love the same way our children do, which is T-I-M-E. They want to have time with you. Yeah. That's a fact, okay? Bring that to life. We can quote you all day. Now it's your time to bring it to life. Now, this is really big. This is, I could spend all day on this, okay? Just this one slide, but I won't. Communicate effectively up front. Guys, when you go to a doctor, he or she probably will leave you with a statement such as, all right, Michelle, blah, 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 blah. Now, here's what's going to happen next. What does that do for you when you think, doc, am I going to live? Is my arm going to fall off? Or what do we got to do here? But he or she says, Jake, you're going to be okay. Here's what's going to happen next. That is classic setting expectations. Never finish a conversation, especially with an onboarding agent, without saying those words. All right, now, agent, here's what's going to happen next. That gives me a sense of peace and comfort and confidence in you, knowing that I'm, you're a person I can follow. You can help me get what I want. That's a, just a lit. Maybe that's what you take away from today. But I told these agents day one, Here's what I do. Here's what I do not do. 
And I set boundaries around that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not exaggerating. I never had in three years there, never had one single call after five o'clock nor on a weekend. I'm not kidding. Because they knew you don't come to Jake here for contract advice. You don't come to me for how to set up a person in command or edge at the time. <laughs> like I was very intentional not to learn all that stuff because I'm a coach. Now I understand some of you were tapped on the shoulder by your leadership and they gave you a set of responsibilities. I'm going to honor that. I don't know every unique person's roles and what your responsibilities are, but in a perfect world, you're coaching. You're not the babysitter. You're not the tech guru. You're not the compliance coordinator, which is what all those you got a minute phone calls are about. I, I know you, I, I know somebody's out there. I'm talking to you right now. Okay. <laughs> You cannot complain about the things you tolerate. I see this as a role modeling example. Jake here was not licensed in the state of South Carolina. Okay. I don't, I honestly don't know the contracts. So when they would come to me for help, I didn't just brush them off. I, I helped them get the help from the appropriate person, but I would explain to them by saying, now see what I just did for you. Right. I'm role modeling. It was a coaching moment. It was a role modeling moment because I said, you came to me with a question. I know what I know and I know what I don't know and I know the difference between the two, just like Gary Keller says. So agent, I don't know, but I'm gonna help you get to the person who does know. So next time when you're in a situation with a buyer or seller and they ask you a question that you don't know, don't fake it till you make it. <laughs> Say, you know what, that's a great question. Let me get in touch with so-and-so because they're the appropriate person asking and we'll get you the answer. That's a professional move. Jake, Martin. I just went over that with 20 plus agents just the previous hour. And I said, there's, there's three things professionals know, what they know, what they don't know, and who they need to talk to. And they never BS on that. And, okay. and we just talked about how we're in a who economy, not a how economy. And um, this is so, so important because so many agents, and this is why I was re-emphasizing this, not only for standards, yeah. But also, how many agents get bogged down in how when they're not talking to who? And it's the talking to the who that gets them the business. Um, so, excellent. Spot on, man. Thank you. All right, number four, last one on the core principles. <clears throat> I just was talking about this. This is what I told agents, literally verbatim. This was my script after some intro stuff. All right, agent. So, Mark, hey, look, I want to make sure that you know how I can best serve you, the highest and best use of mine, your time when we're together. Now, here's what I'm really good at, and here's what I suck at, <laughs> okay? I want to win your mind share, Mark, when it comes to these five things. I'm your guy. When it comes, and by the way, it's in this order, mindset. If you need mindset coaching, we gotta make sure this thing's right first so you're prepared to run a successful business. You know what it looks like. Then activities then results, then skill set development, and then systems and processes. If you think of any one of these five things that you have a challenge or, hey, a celebration in, I want to be the first one to know about it. I'm your guy. <laughs> Notice on here, I did not say I'm the tech guru and the compliance and all the things, and right? That's where it gets muddied up. So the minute they lose sight of this is what coach is going to drive home with me, you just watered down the message and no wonder they're confused on who to go to for what. And they end up just coming to you for all the contract stuff. Now, if you're a broker on here and you, you're kind of pulling double duty, hey, hats off to you. I get that. But there still needs to be a separation of am I wearing the compliance hat right now or am I wearing the coach hat right now? Don't blend the two if you can help it. Mark, anything to add to that? No, I, I think that that's you know, it comes back to you lining up the who's so that you can stay in that zone. You yeah. are not as effective as you can be if you're trying to be all things to all people. This is more than enough work yeah. and um, staying in the, these five areas. And it's the important stuff that will ultimately minimize the urgent stuff. Yeah. And, and, and it says it in our titles, guys, where we are, I mean, director of productivity, productivity coach, it's, whatever. Productivity is the underlying word there. <laughs> These are the 20% things that generate and drive production. It's, you got to be okay with making a mess a little bit behind you that additional staff and leadership can help, help you clean up. That's a good problem to have. 
right? But Jake, you don't have Jake, to be all things to everybody. Yeah. I, I would add to that just so the just to put this into perspective. I, I moved to Florida in a year ago, um, just a year ago, and launched this program from zero. And there were a handful of mentors who kind of looked at me sideways of what do you know? <laughs> and and I was like, I'm not gonna get bogged down in the the knowing of Florida law. I'm gonna get that bogged down in these five things. I'm gonna stay on that. And when we fast forward. Here we are a year year later, and we've we've still got some of those mentors hanging around, but we are five, six, seven units to every one that they create. By but they they say, oh, we know all the stuff. They're bogged down in the stuff, but they're not coaching. And coaching go. is what leads to productivity. Good. Yeah, the evidence is all around. All right, so I'm going to transition on you here. Now, factors to earning 100K. As long as we get to agree on the foundation, those core principles, here's some factors. Nothing, nothing earth shattering here, guys. Set goals <laughs> and get into action. I can't, right? I mean, I don't mean to laugh and make this so elementary, but for real, like how many of you, don't answer this if you don't want to, but how many of you have an economic model? And, and a full-blown economic model isn't, well, here's what I want to make. No, it's reverse engineering the living crap out of that down to the science, a mathematical formula of percentages and ratios and how many appointments that lead to this, which leads to that. And it's essentially bringing back those four conversations like you know KW used to really, really hammer on with TLs. What is your four conversations, right? Do you have a budget model? If, again, if you're in the mindset of a CEO, maybe you don't, maybe right now it's, Nothing, right? But what happens when you need to hire that transaction coach? What happens when you need to go buy those leads to create a dependent model, right? There's a budget there, whether you need it now or later, that you need to be sensitive to and say, at what point do those things trigger along the way? So again, I'm leading with revenue, not expenses, just like KW teaches us. Yeah. Do you have a 135? Who's your accountability buddy, right? You, do you yourself have a coach? Uh, a lot of coaches do not. And that was me for a while. And then I went to the Northern California, Hawaii region to teach on some things to productivity coaches. They invited me out there, believe it or not. And um, that was one of the things that resonated with the audience is when I said, look, if you're out there, PCs, you're, you may not like me in a second. I said, if you don't have a coach, you are a fraud, here you are trying to pull people in and say, I can help you. And yet who's coaching you? All right. Anyway, I'll move on past that. So the energy doesn't get weird. <laughs> Vulnerable enough to share with leadership, ALC meeting, agents in the program. Share it. I told you earlier that one thing on that panel was alignment. Does your TL, ALC, whoever, agents in the market center, are you singing the praises of your, of your vision so other people your warmth, they will come from miles and miles away just to sit around that campfire and feel your warmth. Because what does John Maxwell teach us? People first buy into the leader before they will buy into your vision. But it doesn't diminish the importance of them kind of happening simultaneously. What is the vision? Why? How are you going to be the game changer for me after two years of being in the business and I feel stuck? Well, it comes with passion and conviction through you having all of these bullet points established. So now when it's game time and you're in front of a team meeting and that's an audience, captive audience, they say, wow, does he or she speak with conviction? They know exactly where they're going. I might want to slow down and take a look at that PC thing. Right? Mark, anything to add to this one? You know, one of my favorite sayings is no one follows into battle an uncertain battle cry have your vision, speak your vision, lead your vision, and people, you will bring along those people that go, I want where they're going. And um, is your vision big enough to inspire others to say, I'm, I'm right behind you? Yeah. Guys, I'm not that smart. I don't think I'm that talented, but I am passionate and I do have enthusiasm. That, that I will humble brag, not so humble. Um, I get a lot of things wrong. I do. <laughs> I can, and I can learn and coach myself and whatever through that. But guys, again, I, I'm going to reference Fort Mill. How in the hell can I launch with 68 agents after 30 days of getting to know them? 
how in the world a year later did we do a, a million bucks of company dollar? When you're looking at a guy who has sold one home in his entire career in real estate. Oh, by the way, I was a 0.52 medium fit on the KPA for a productivity coach. Like I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing here. If, especially if you're one of those people who says, oh, well, how could he coach if he's never done it himself? Because I understand the difference of coaching and training, you knucklehead. I didn't claim to be on the world's best CMA trainer, but I know how to ask questions. I know how to squeeze every ounce of potential out of you. I know how to use care and candor. I know all those things. I know I'm real good. So you can judge me all you want. The fact that I've sold one home, it's not because I sucked. It's just because I got the opportunity to be a TL relatively quickly. But that's besides the point, right? Humble yourself in front of them. Share, 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 share. You might be a 007 secret productivity coach right now. Coach the numbers. I really believe this. We're talking about how do I become a six-figure productivity coach, right? That's what, that's the today's topic. Well, this is point number two. Know the language of real estate for your program. I mean, my Lord, you're coaching hopefully people all day on their goals, establishing their activities, are you tracking your own? Mm -hmm. Coach the gap, right? What are the goals versus the actuals? I've had so many moments over the years where I'm not just tracking the individual agent's numbers. I'm also letting all that filter up to the top so I can see my scoreboard. The four disciplines of execution book was insanely uh, uh, influential for me when I was going to set up the program. One of my, actually, it probably is my favorite bold law is people grow into the conversations you create around them. I love that one. And it's so simple and it is so true, right? If I can create business conversations, even though they're going to try to pull you over here and say, can't you just tell me how to do a great open house? Do we really need to spend the first five or 10 minutes talking about my numbers? Yeah, we do. Because if I let them off the hook, even just once, it's just like a child. They're going to push and push to see what they can get away with. It goes back to that whole standards and expectation thing. I told them, hey, look, we're going to meet for 30 minutes. Generally speaking, the first five, maybe 10 minutes, we'll see, is going to be spent looking at the numbers. What did you do? What didn't you do? Let's interrogate some reality going on there. And then we'll get to, if we're lucky, the remaining 15 or 20 minutes to talk about what you say you want to get out of today, like the top 10 open house tips or whatever the heck it could be. Right, but Jacob, I will. Yep. Well, you're spot on here because agents want to dodge and hide in the minutia. They right. want to hide in headshots and emails and email signature lines and business cards. And when you keep it focused here, there is a purposeful discomfort that moves them in the direction. I often say, I just with a, a smile and a twinkle, and I always say, do you know why this box here for this number is so small? And they go, why? And go, there's not room for an excuse. Now let's have conversations around that. Mm -hmm. And you got to say it with a smile and a twinkle in your eye, but you got to mean it. You got to mean it. You got to mean it. And, and, and I, you know, we all have our, our stories. Mine, and I'll be quick here, is Ryan and Heather Bigger. They, they made me as a coach and I made them, as an agent couple, they were the husband and wife couple. I started in the market center September, I'm sorry, August, 2016. They joined as brand new husband and wife couple in September of 2016. Two people never coached before, sold one home, couple who's transitioning from not real estate into, oh my God, what do I do world? Fast forward a year later, they closed $10 million of volume, 40 homes, $300,000 of gross commission income, which was five times what Ryan ever earned as a semi-truck driver in any given year, first year of real estate. So I'm sorry if I'm not allowing your excuses. And here's why, because Ryan and Heather, they submitted themselves to the process. There was no going backwards. They were living on food stamps, had to borrow 500 bucks each from their parents just to enroll in real estate school, had no money. So yeah, I am passionate about this because we knew after a year of tracking this, they knew for every 20, 28 conversations, they would get one appointment. They knew for every 47 conversation that would actually yield them a closing. So what did we do? We took their average sales price, or average GCI divided by 47 conversations and it spits out on the other end of it, other end of it 
every conversation was worth one hundred and twenty five dollars. Every conversation changed the way you look at things, things you could look at change. So no longer do they say, oh, I got to lead generate today. It's all right. I'm going to make my 10 contacts today because Ignite told me to. Regardless of outcome, I just created my base salary of $1,250 every day as long as I go talk to my 10 people. I'm putting faith in the system that if I get 47, 46 no's, I'm going to get that 47th yes. They knew they were making money even before it hit their bank account. You see, how did we know that? Because we consistently, unapologetically tracked numbers and they just submitted to the process. They didn't see it as an event. Love That's it. a big Love subject. <laughs> All right, creating a team culture. I hit on this earlier, but guys, ladies, gentlemen, I need you to understand, <laughs> please. Not for me, do it for yourself. This is not a program. Stop using program language if you can. Definitely stop using graduate from PC program. Eliminate the graduate conversation. This is a team. This is a bit, you're probably the biggest mega agent team in your office, most of you. You just happen to provide the most training, the most support, the most, most coaching support for the least amount of money. It's a 10% for most of you, 10% GCI not 50. Okay. You're a team baby, which also comes with the responsibility to create a team culture, creating that team scoreboard. So you take it, here's my point. You take it from a group of individuals. Yes. It's important. They have their own individual goal and big why, but if you can do that, any great coach takes it from a team of individuals playing individual sports to a, to a group sport, a team sport. Now they're connected to something bigger than themselves. Now you've got agents coming to you saying, hey coach, it's, it's halfway through the month. How are we doing on pace towards our goal? You should ugly cry at that moment because they just came to you and basically said, it's no longer about me. It's about my brother here and my sister here and all of us bonding together so we can all get what we want to out of this. I'm telling you, you have arrived PCs when you get to that point. Right now, after working with nearly 200 productivity coaches and offices, I can tell you this is the number one thing probably that I see at large, aside from onboarding systems, um, that can be heavily and drastically improved on and see an immediate impact on the results. Mark, no what doubt. do you say to that? No doubt. And, it, and it's just, it, look, it's, it's work. This is the work. And because it is easy to chase a bunch of individuals, it takes work and vision and purpose to create the team. And it's something that I'm still working on and still growing on. And, and uh, these conversations always come back around to say, yep, that's, I, I cannot let that be in the background. That's, that's front and center. Look at anything with exponential growth. Here, here's, I want you guys to do this, if you can hear my voice right now. When we're finished here today, sometime within the next week, I want you to do a survey, just a quick little poll, one-to-one -one or whatever you need to do. Say, hey, agent, quick question. Why did you join Keller Williams? Just ask 10 people, quick little sample study. I'll bet you, I mean, you get different versions of the same answer here, but I'll bet you probably 80-20 rule, 80%-ish, will say something to the effect of, I came to Keller Williams dot, dot, dot because of something related to the culture. It was the vision of God family business. I knew I was aligned with the right people. It was the MVVBP, some Y4C2Ts, right? It was, I'll bet you whatever their version of that answer is, you can just clump it into one category called, they were actually attracted to the culture, not the splits, not the technology, not the whatever, profit share, culture. So if it was good enough to run this company to number one in the world, I think there's some clues there to run your PC program to number one as well. And it's such a missing link. We're saying, come here because I can help solve X. You're missing it. That's part of it, but you're missing it. Come here because you're a part of something. And that something is called the PC community or whatever you want to do, because we got each other's backs and we're doing big things. Oh, don't miss this piece, please. Sorry, moving on. Coaching versus training. 
do you understand what coaching versus training is? And this is more of a <clears throat> team leaders, OPs, if you're watching this out there, this is more to you, but also the coaches. I see so many put in this role and I don't get caught up on semantics. They're actually trainers. They were really successful selling homes once upon a time. And therefore by default, their resume suggests they should be good at helping others do the same. False. <laughs> Just because you are a good uh, player doesn't mean you're a good coach. Okay. So do you know the difference of coaching versus training? Yes, both take place, but you have to know when you're doing one and when you're doing the other and as appropriate. Don't blend and just confuse the two together. Major I I want to speak, let me speak to that real quickly. Do. I was coaching an agent, new agent. And as we're sitting down having conversations about activities, he, he let me know that he was not doing the activities outlined for him. Tell me more about that. Well, it just so happened that a truly millionaire real estate agent who he's been shadowing has been telling him everything that he needs to do, which is related to his website, his headshot, his emails, all of the things that she said, oh, you're new, you need to be doing this. And so I, I other than being a little peeved, <laughs> I stopped and I said, so curious, um, when does she do those things? And she said, he said, well, she doesn't, she has people that does all of those things so that all she can do is talk to people. Oh, so she's organized her world where the most important thing she could do is talk to people. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if she's a millionaire real estate agent, what do we call that? What, what, what's the clue here? And he said, the most important thing I can do is talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it's coming back through that process that he was getting trained in things that wasn't going to lead to him. It's not going to lead him to productivity. And so guiding through that, it's, it's finding that fire in someone and bringing it back around to the, the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Don't confuse coaching as professional advice giving. How how's that work out for you if you have children when you tell your son or your daughter, go clean your room? There's a natural rebellion that happens in us, especially people that got into real estate because they were sick and tired of having a boss and they wanted freedom and flexibility. You're barking up the wrong tree. There's a different way to go about it. And it's called self-discovery, which is what coaching really is. It's asking questions so they understand they're the author of the action, not you just barking orders at them. That's coaching. All right. Number five, retention and engagement. What a big topic. Again, this is no fair to you guys because each of these slides is like a, its own hour thing if we got in the, in the meats and taters of it. But just to bring it to your attention, if nothing else, maybe here's some ideas for you. Maybe to help with retention and engagement of the agents in your program, you could create a CLC, a coaching leadership council. There's an idea for you. Go tap some of your agents in the program. This is not a popularity contest, but you see them as a future ALC member. Maybe it's a future TL that you spawn out of your program. Maybe it's a future coach that's helping you coach someday. We got to raise up leaders, not just followers. So who are those CLC members that you might be able to say, hey, I want to create some committees for the PC program. You're my culture committee. You're my events committee. You're my whatever growth committee. Hello, sound familiar? Why not duplicate the same model as a PC program? Because why? You're running it like a business and you're duplicating what works for a market center. Just an idea. Do you have a value drip? Are you using KW Command right now for automated drips and things to go out? Why not? Contests, recognition, we got no shortage of ideas on that. Make it fun, my Lord. Stop taking yourself and them so seriously. Do you have a private Facebook group? Some, some people don't. Do you have an exclusive YouTube channel for all those knock, knock, you got them. And can you explain paragraph three on page six of the contract? Dude, record yourself using a free screen recording thing, explaining how to fill it out and what it all means and make that the first barrier before they come to you. You got your own exclusive YouTube channel you can upload those things into. This was huge hit for me. Every month, every month since day one, I was doing a top 20% luncheon. 
So after we transmitted, I got the report from the previous month from our MCA. I would scan it the long old fashioned way and pick out my top 20% GCI earners from the program. And what did I do? Every month, man, they would, they would go to the Carolina Ale House across from the street. And I personally, me, paid for their tab. We just, we broke bread together. It was wonderful. We didn't talk about work. They loved it. I'm not kidding. There was people that would work harder to have a seat at that table than they would for the commission check. And I took a, what do you think I did? I took a selfie and I put that thing out there on my social media in the market centers page. It kills how many birds with one stone? Quarterly events, field trips, go to a, a closing attorney or whatever your state does and say, hey, can we sit around a table at your, at your office and go through a mock closing? Hey, let me go approach this home builder and talk to the, the on-site agent and see how do they show homes, hint, hint, a glorified open house. Field trips, get them out of the office. I had one coach who, who's in Fayetteville, North Carolina, who took a group of his PC clients to Raleigh, North Carolina to visit another coach, just total carpool thing. And they spent the day training and mixing and mingling with one another to create a referral relationship and to feel a part of a community. It was genius. Handwritten notes, gratitude, there's no shortage of ideas. So this being an area I can almost promise all of you are struggling with, how do I get more of my agents engaged? How do I retain more agents so they're bulletproof and they're not gonna leave me? Here's a short list of so many ideas that you could implement. Pick one and get started. Mark, what do you what do you got? Well, you know, look, th these are all we, we've got. Our um, we're going to the Wharf Eight Eight Five Zero, which is uh, a bar this Wednesday. Creating those events around it, they get cards from me at certain point. I have the brownie point of the week where I'll send them brownies through amcards.com, and I pick out an agent that's just really played played well. And so little things like that go so far. And yes, what we say is if we have to, my coaching team, if we have to answer a question more than once, we document it, we put it on video and we've got it accessible. So it frees up our time. Yep. And on the back side of my door, knowing that every coaching session that I do one-to-one -one is a closed door meeting on the back of that door, when it's closed and very visible to the rest of the market center, highly trafficked area, I had a blown up poster, right? And I had the top 20%. No, I, no, I, I take that back. I had the capper club. Anybody who's capped in my program, present, past, whatever, was highlighted there. Underneath that, it was the, the MVPs, kind of like this top 20% stars from the previous month, like I just said. Leaders underneath that in the key categories that I was tracking. And at the very bottom, it was our spotlight agent of the month. And with a little blurb that that agent typed up for me that I just copy and pasted at the bottom of this with their picture, a big old poster telling the story because visuals create conversation and visuals are evidence of proof that it works. If you're not seeing success, maybe it's because you're not engaging like these people are and that in and of itself is a coaching moment. Number six, tell your story proactively, underline that word. <laughs> We said this moments ago, John Maxwell, people buy into the leader before they buy into the vision, buy in, that shouldn't say buying, <laughs> buy in to the vision. Do you believe that? So how are they buying into you? How are you positioning yourself? Are you being transparent and vulnerable to say, hey, look, here's my imperfections. Here's what I had to go through to get where I am today. Here's where I'm not, you know exactly great and talented or whatever, whatever degree you want to share, it's your story and people connect with stories, okay? It makes you human. It brings you down to their level to an extent and say, oh, yeah, they get me. They struggled too. That's why I have no shame in sharing how just five years ago, I had a, I had a bad marriage. Didn't have a bad wife. I had a bad marriage because I was working my head off and she said she didn't have a husband. She had a roommate. All the while, I'm knee deep, 70 grand in debt between credit cards and back taxes. I'm not making as much money every month as I'm spending every month. That's a problem. Just had liquidated 80 grand of her 401k and mine to, to handle a couple moves. Things were not good. I had $8,000 in my name and it was going fast. 
oh, and by the way, I've sold one home and I was transitioning and moving and all these things. If I share something like that and you judge me, that's more about you than it is about me. But maybe somewhere in my story, you connect with me because you say, wow, I'm struggling financially too. My marriage isn't as great either because now there's a, a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. Things are much better just for the record. Okay. My marriage is fine. Um, <laughs> but it, you know, look, look, I'm, I can own my story because it's my story. And you, Michelle, Stephanie, Mark, all of us have stories to tell, but we get shamed in our own minds from telling it because we don't want judgment or people to look at us and say, they're supposed to be a coach. They don't have it all together. Now be smart in what you share. I'm not, you know, all this in the right context, but dang it, man. Some of you, if you're looking for a breakthrough on growth, maybe you need to tell your story better. And I think, I think this, the, the litmus test for that is, am I telling my story for the, their benefit or am I telling yeah. my story for my benefit? That's right. So transparency is always comes back to who's benefiting from this. Um, we're not there to get our needs met. We're there to meet theirs. Yeah. And if you guys, there's no shortage of books out there. Um, just one game changer for me was the storyteller secret. Um, Car Carmine Gallo or whatever, who, who does TED Talks and all that stuff. The Storyteller's Secret was huge for me. Um, there's tons of them out there. You know, um, the presentation secrets of Steve Jobs, on and on and on down the list, if you know this is an area of improvement. I know we got a boogie here. We got less than 10 minutes. Okay, that's almost five. Number seven, real quick, conduct one-on-one -on -one sessions. What I want to make sure I say about this is it's not about you and your time at the sacrifice of value to the people who are depending on you and paying you. What do I mean by that? I'm not kidding. Before I took the PC job role, whatever, I talked to 62 PCs throughout Keller Williams all across the country. And I'm not exaggerating when I say I found 61 ways I knew I did not want to run my business. Did not. First of all, it was wild, wild west. Everybody was doing what they wanted to do. And secondly, the thing that rubbed me the wrong way the most was everybody was group coaching people to death and saying, well, you get to earn one one-on-one -on -one because I'm all that's holy and you're not worth my time is the message that you're sending be, until you close four transactions. I'm sorry if that offends you, if you're out there watching this right now and that's your setup, I would just ask you to interrogate that. What in the hell are we doing if we're not meeting with people one-to-one? -on -one? These are the people that need it more, if anything else. Then I would argue they might need less of you the more they get on with things. It was just so bass backwards to me. And I've always believed the quickest way to success is observe what the masses are doing, the herd mentality, and do the exact opposite. And that's what I did. And I really, really believe, I get asked all the time, how did you create a million dollars of company dollar in your first year? I believe this is it. Because it put me in the trench. I got to know my people and I'm coaching them. I didn't seek how can I make the most money in the least amount of time and leverage my face off. If I wasn't one-to-one -one across from somebody, that was my most highest income generating activity of the day aside from recruiting. And if I'm just group, group, group to make my, it more calendar friendly for me, I'm missing out. I really believe that. So, and I, I would just echo that the agents that are engaging with the one-on-one -on -one, um, they are the highest producers and do not neglect that. Um, and as a matter of fact, you need to be bringing some of those along saying, hey, we haven't met one-on-one. -on -one. Let's get back into that rhythm and schedule it out. Create standing times, not get back on my calendar. No, let's right. schedule it now. That is high, high value, valuable time. That's what your MAPS coach is going to do with you. I mean, there, you have standing time in a day and, and a frequency to that. I, I took the route of, it says it right there, increased value through additional coaching staff, not reduction of services. Once I was hang, banging my head, I had about 60 people in the program. I knew it was time. And it was not an option to change the rhythm of which I met with people. It was time to add more talent so that rhythm could, could keep up. Make sense? Yeah. Man. Such a big one right there. And lastly, do what others, I'm sorry, do what you ask of others. This is authenticity, right? Have a coach. We already talked about that. Recruit, 
regenerate, right? With them, in front of them. Could be a great coaching moment. They can hear you, right? Build systems just like you want them to build a system. Whether it's contract to close or otherwise, what's your onboarding? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, maybe that'll be my next class because I, it is overwhelming <laughs> how many market centers and then the PC program within that market center just have jacked up onboarding systems. And that experience, that tone you set day one has a trickle down effect. So some of you, your source of frustration around agent engagement and productivity or lack thereof, I'm not kidding you. You follow the breadcrumbs, it may lead you back to the onboarding. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, man. And then everything else. If you want them to operate with a PL, you should too. If you want them to grow personally and professionally, what are you reading or listening to right now? On and on and on. And are you sharing that with them? Yes. Model, model, model. Yep. Guys, I don't say this to be annoyed or talked down. I say this out of passion because I see it so much. Oops. I see it so dang much. What am I doing over here? Crazy. Get this out of my way. There we go. But I want to leave. I know we're at time. Is there any questions or any takeaways that we're, are worth sharing right now? Because um, I want to respect your time. We're at the top of the hour. That was a lot to squeeze in. <laughs> what stood yeah, out to you? Jake, I think I think these here here are the things that um, that are so important. It's not rocket science. It's mastering the basics, and it, it's doing the basics and then mastering them. Right. And as you do this with focus, that's where the success is going to come in. Right. Um, six figure income does not happen spare time. Right. Six figure income doesn't happen by accident. And so everything you've outlined here is what I've implemented to create a six figure opportunity here. And it's doable. Um, don't treat this like a hobby. That's right. And, and I'll leave it at that is Gary Keller tells us, right? Success is boring, right? You got to master the things and just be just accept the boredom that's associated with mastery, I believe is his exact quote. And that's what we're talking about here. It's the blocking and tackling. It's the fundamentals of how to grip the bat and hold the baseball that I'm going to keep teach a kid when he's eight years old and those guys on TV earning millions upon millions of dollars are doing every year. The game and the fundamentals do not change. We just have to accept the boredom and stop trying to be creative all the dang time. And it's repetition, repetition, repetition to the point of mastery. And sometimes that's boring. <laughs> so with I'm that, sorry. go ahead. If, yeah, if, if we can be of any help to you or anyone else who, who may be watching to this recording, we're available. No, I appreciate it. this was awesome. And Thank you. One of my big takeaways is that my I have a very small program because it's brand new and my coaching people don't even really know each other. So uh, I have to do the team. That team, Michelle. I have to do the team thing. <laughs> yeah. It, it will be that is so key and is so doable. It people is people are longing to be a part of a team. Right. Well, you go get help. that, Michelle. I will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. If we bye can bye. help you, just reach out to us. You're I welcome. appreciate it. Bye. Of course. All right. Take we'll care. see you. Bye-bye.